wherever they go. But if you were a plebeian, then you probably didn't learn the difference between a transitive or an intransitive verb. But nonetheless, like Moliere's character, who's amazed to learn that he's been speaking prose all of his life, you've also been using transitive and intransitive verbs most of your life. To clarify the meaning, a transitive verb needs an object. An intransitive verb doesn't need an object. In other words, if Zayd hits Amr, and the Arabs love using hit, I mean, that's always invariably the sentences that they use in their grammar books to teach little children about how language works. It's always Zayd hitting Amr. With us, it was Jane sees spot. I mean, you can tell how old I am, right? Now it's, you know, Hillary has two mommies or something like that. So, but times are changing. So the Arabs are still using Zayd hit Amr. Baraba Zaydun Amran. If you look at those three words, Saluma. Saluma is the first base or Salima Yaslamu. Beautiful word. Salim. What does that mean? It means something that is whole. Something that is whole. Now, that's really interesting. Salam is the one without any defects. It's a name of God. The one that has no defects. It's, there's a wholeness. There's nowhere where you can point and say that's out of place. Salim is safe, sound. So aslama means intransitive is a state. You see, it's a state. I am salim. I don't need any object. That is a sentence that doesn't have an object. I'm the subject. I am salim. Ana salim which means I'm whole, I'm safe, I'm integral, I'm together. That's what it means. Now, if you look at amuna, it means to be safe and secure. To be safe and secure. To be in a situation of trust. You're not worried. You feel amin, amin. And then you look at the third one, hasuna yahsunu, which means to be beautiful. And that's the third, that's the highest. So the first one is to be whole. You're not a hypocrite. Hypocrites are split. Their inside and their outside are different. So they're not salam. There's no salama. There's no wholeness to a hypocrite. And then the next stage is because you're whole, you're secure. You feel secure. You know who you are. You're not trying to fool anybody. You feel secure. And then the next stage is when people look at you, you're Hassan. You're actually something that is pleasing for others to experience. Now, if you take that to make those all intransitive, you go to the fourth form. You could go to the second, but the fourth form is actually a more interesting form for this meaning than the second. And this isn't a lecture in Arabic grammar, so I won't explain the difference between fa'ala and af'ala. But if you look at this fourth form, aslama means to make whole. To make whole. It also means to surrender. Because things are at war, so when you surrender, there's no longer separation. There's no longer antagonism there's a state of salama or salam. So it's entering into a state of peace. Aslama means to give up the ghost, to die. Aslama nafsahu. So all of these are ways in which that first form is, takes an object. Aslama nafsahu, gave up his soul. Aslama lillah, he entered into a state of submission. If you look at the next one, amana, if you just took that using the system that's taught by the morphologist, that would mean to make safe, to make something safe, amana. And then when if you use the preposition ba, then it means to actually make safe yourself through a means. So amana billahi, to make yourself safe through a means, but it's also obviously to believe in it by extension. That's one of the nuanced meanings of it. 
And then you look at the third and the highest, ahsana, to make beautiful. Inna Allah yuhibb al So those are all qualities of the believer. I mean, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. They're in a state. So that's how I've understood Islam. It's actually a state that you're supposed to be in. Now, one of the things that's really interesting is you very rarely meet people that are in that state. And so you start to begin to wonder, well, what is this then? Is this really, I mean, is there a religion out there called Islam? Are there people out there called Muslims? Are there actually people that believe in these things? Because belief necessitates that you act according to it. I mean, that's the nature. If it's not, it's called hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is never considered belief in any religious tradition that I know of, except hypocrisy. I mean, that's my understanding, is that hypocrisy is not accepted. It's not an acceptable state to be in, to be in a hypocritical state. So the reason that I just said all that was really, it just amazes me the state that we find ourselves in. Because... You know, I've said this before, but I really believe all this clamoring for an Islamic state is a little tiresome. You know, it's just a little tiresome. Because all these characters that are clamoring for this Islamic state, when I actually look at them, I don't see them in an Islamic state. 